Hello, and welcome back to the Celestial Perch. This is part two of the Holy Covenant review, where I do kind of a sort of deep dive slash first impressions of what I think of the new Holy Covenant Federation coming for Spiritualist Empires and Stellaris Patch 3.6. Uh, done part one so far, that went over the level one and two of the Federation. So I've already gone over the Federation itself and level two. And for this video, we're going to move into level 3 and level 4. Uh, level 3 will start it off with ecclesiastical funding. Uh, we gain access to the Holy Covenant trade policy, which grants far greater unity conversion than mercantile trade policies. So I believe, I'll bring put it up here on the screen, but I believe the unity from trade policies, you get 0.5 energy and 0.25 unity. So I don't know exactly what the Holy Covenant trade policy is. I maybe would guess something around 0.5 to 0.5, or maybe even something generous like 0.5 to 0.75 unity for every uh, trade value. That would be pretty nice overall. Could be okay. I I don't know if it will be entirely worth running over just pure energy. The, the issue with this is that you already make so much unity from just stacking all of these benefits that we've talked about, that just having an additional thing of unity might not really be what you're gunning for, especially at level three. Uh, next, moving on, we have Heavenly Accord, and I'll kind of pair that with In Pursuit of Ascension. This will reduce the planetary ascension cost and increase the effect both by 20%. Um, the cost and effect they're, they're both good, I'll say that. The only issue I have currently with Ascension effects is that in the early to mid game, you're going to want to use pretty much all of your unity for either leaders, leader upkeep, or going through traditions as soon as possible. And that's really it. You're not trying to kind of set yourself back too much on unity and your progress through the traditions tree. So it can be paired nicely with a new civic called, I believe it's Ascensionists, which will reduce the cost and increase the effect again. So there are some interesting builds that you could do with maybe trying to immediately reduce the uh, cost and effect by quite a bit, stack it on a certain planet and get the effects increased as well. But for just like a regular empire or just an empire that's not focusing on that, it might come into play a bit late for it to be something really powerful. So overall, my impression for the third levels, they're okay. Um, I'm not too impressed with the third levels. Kind of all of them are more in the meh territory. I think the Heavenly Accord and Pursuit of Ascension have some interesting niche application, but I think for just the vast majority of builds, they will only be okay. Now moving on to level four, we have Empowerment of the priestly class, so unity-focused colony designations will produce an extra one priest jobs per 25 pops. This can be further increased via planetary ascension. Okay. So, this one is interesting in the sense that, you know, I, it, there are plenty of ways to break Stellaris, and one of them is just the, you know, putting a thousand pops on a planet and getting just hundreds of priest jobs. That is something that people have done with uh, Quest for the Toxic God. I think it will be less powerful here. As priests, they give you unity. I believe they give you a spiritualist ethics attraction, and they give you amenities. Uh, unity is really the only thing that you would want um, to kind of develop your empire. Obviously, the others are good. It's just that, you know, going out of your way to cheese or get a lot of priest jobs on one planet might not really be worth it. You're probably only going to have one to two unity-focused colony designations anyways. So this might only result in maybe like 10 to 20 extra priest jobs over the course of an entire game. Moving on to saintly hierarchy, um, sacred nexuses and equivalent buildings provide plus one high priest jobs. High Priest jobs are pretty good. I'll have it on screen here. Um, this just seems overall pretty solid. Sacred Nexuses are fine. Um, 
just kind of an average bonus. Nothing really to speak to it too much. Uh, just average power overall. Something you can use. High priests are never bad. And just to mention that both of these, I believe, will pair quite nicely with um, the civic... The Priesthood Civic, I forgot the exact name of it, I'll put it up here in the video, but might pair quite nicely, get even more unity out of your Priests. And lastly, Shroud Delving. This is an interesting one. Uh, Shroud Delve cooldown, uh, produced by 20%. Shroud is one of the more powerful and key features of Psionics, and if you are starting a Holy Covenant, you are most likely Spiritualist, and you're most likely going down Psionic. It's only usable by the president. Uh, Shroud has plenty of powerful bonuses. I'll put some of them up here on the screen, some of the more powerful ones. So getting access to these a bit earlier, or possibly sooner, could be nice. You can get extra shields, extra hull, sensor range, leader lifespan, unique techs. So getting this is quite good. I think overall, these are better than the level four, or the, the level three. Significantly better than, than level three. It's just by, by level 4, it's going to be sort of later into the game, so having all these extra priest jobs might not be as important. The Shroud Delve cooldown, though, is pretty good. So if you can get here a bit earlier, and you might be able to, because as we mentioned before, the proselytizing envoys can help you get there a bit earlier, help with the cohesion, help with the XP gain. So you might be here sooner than you normally would be, um, which might make it a bit better than initially suspected. Overall, I'm going to give level 3 and 4 okay on level 3 and pretty solid on level 4. But uh, that should be it for part 2. In part 3, we will turn into the 5th and last, and then just kind of my overall impressions. But thank you for listening. Have a blessed day.